Hey guys, today I'm making Indian Yellow, the synthetic version PY153 or Nickel Dioxime Yellow. This is not the cow's urine as you can see here. These are not the bowls of puree as they used to uh, be used more than a hundred years ago. More about that in the caption, but uh, this is the synthetic version that is also no longer produced since 2012. Luckily, I have a large amount of it so I can still use it for painting my mixing palette as individual pans that I sell on my Etsy shop. Um, I'm going to show you how I work with this pigment since, as you can see here, it is a hydrophobic pigment. It does not like water-based uh, fluids. It just rolls off. So I have a method for it, uh, which is actually the first step on uh, little tricks that I will share on how to make paint. I'm not going to use my pellet knife for wetting the pigment. I'm going to use my muller and my plate. Uh, I like to think of it as breaking the surface tension of my um, binder. It's not scientifically accurate uh, saying it like that, but I'm creating a large sticky surface on my plate and later I'm going to spread out the pigment over it. You can see it already catches a bit of the yellow. Um, it's not mixed or dispersed thoroughly, but I'm making a large sticky surface and I'm spreading the pigment on that sticky surface. So um, I don't need to use my pellet knife for this phase. As you can see here, it just makes lumps and creates a, a messy kind of substance. Uh, here I have some control over how much pigment I want to spread over the sticky surface that I created with my binder. Basically, the principle is the same. Uh, I like this better for hydrophobic pigments. You can use it for phthalos, for quinacridones, um, uh, for any hydrophobic pigment that you will work with. Um, I really like the method. As you can see here, I'm putting the dry pigment in the middle again by twisting my muller. It takes some different techniques that you um, might be used to. For me, this actually really works. So um, it is already quite getting there uh, in terms of getting the pigment wet. It is not dispersed yet, it still has loads of dry uh, particles in my binder, so mulling still needs to be done. About this pigment, it is a warm yellow. Um, as I said, I'm using it in my mixing palette next to my cooler yellow, and um, I really like this version of Indian yellow. You have, I think, 12 different pigments that go on the name Indian Yellow. Um, they're single pigments, they're, pig they're, they're pigment mixes that companies use. But I really like this P1, uh, PY153. Um, if you're cleaning your muller, also clean those sides since that catches a lot of dry pigments, especially with hydrophobic pigments. You don't want those dry lumps and, and dry grains of pigment in your paint uh, when you're doing your last round of mulling and you're putting it in the pans and there's dry pieces of pigment floating on top of your half pans. So make sure everything's off. I'm not finished yet. I just want everything together and spreading it out again. So I can get, ha have a good look if it's the right consistency and if I can see any part, uh, pieces of pigment still kind of floating or not being dispersed in my binder. It takes quite a long time, um, but this wasn't a lot of pigment. So the more pigment you use, the longer you're milling. Uh, just for a teaspoon, you could be finished within a couple of minutes, depending on the pigment. Uh, if, you take, if you're talking tablespoons full of pigments or more uh, by doing it in this method, um, it, it can take hours. Uh, I don't really like that since you also risk 
uh, any dusk landing, uh, dust landing in your paint. Um, so the faster you, you'll be finished with it, um, the cleaner your paint stays. Uh, I'm working in a rather controlled environment, so it's not really a big problem for me. But when you're doing this at home, uh, on your coffee table, or on your dining table, or in your in your bedroom, um, there's dust flying around and just uh, landing on your paint. It's sticky, it lands, and you mull it through. It won't be visible uh, when you're mulling. It will be visible when you're swatching it out, or you can just find a particle of dust or a hair if you have cats or dogs or anything. Um, you don't want that in your paint. Not if you're selling them, if you're making them for yourself, um, you know, it's it, it's not that big of a problem. So I'm cleaning off my plate again. I'm all doing this with uh, one uh, palette knife. I have uh, three palette knives that I actually prefer. Um, I'm checking the consistency of my paint here with the Hackman gauge. Uh, it's a tool that I use with every batch of paint that I make. Uh, sometimes I'm showing it, sometimes I'm not, but I'm showing you the full process here uh, just to see if the paint is uh, fully dispersed. Then I'm going to fill my pans. Uh, these are 3D printed pans made by myself and uh, they all have my logo and the pigment number in it. It said PY153 in this case tapping out any bubbles here and I'm filling off the paint. Since it's a small batch, I only have some paint, uh, pans to fill. And as you can see, I only fill them to a, qu a quarter, maybe a third of the pan. Um, since I don't want it to crack, I don't want air bubbles to be trapped inside my paint while it dry. Uh, more about that later too in another video. Um, but you want to pour your pans in a minimum of three to four layers. If you want to have the muffin top pans, as you can see uh, with some makers, um, they need an extra layer on top of it. These are my custom dot pans. I made these myself as well, uh, just to sample them. But as you can see, three to four rather large dots of paint go in them. So it's still, it's more like a mini pen than a dot, but they fit in any regular watercolor palette, which I really like. Swatching out this paint, you can see it's a lovely warmish uh, yellow. Uh, it is quite transparent, lays down beautifully, and it barely has any drying shift. Well, drying shift is where you can see the change of color here it's drying, uh, the change of color while it's drying. With phthalos, with uh, crinacridones, with some earth colors, you can see a large drying shift, which means um, it changes a lot while it's drying, where it has a deep color to begin with, it dulls down while it's drying. Cleaning off my plate, and here I'm going to check it with my spectrometer. I'm going to show you which data it gives. Like I said, it's a beautiful reddish yellow. And these are the digital numbers and the C-Lab data. Hope you like it. 